Okay. Um, I'm just bored. And I've been kind of on a legal rampage lately because of all the other stuff. So, to be honest, I'm kind of attacking things the state holds dear. And one of the things they like to do is get people who like sex offenders on polygraph tests. And so I'm just being a little jerk. And we are about to create a image. Actually, let's come down here. And I'm going to stretch my Krita skills right here to actually create a this thing and just actually show the statistics and everything and I'm going to actually just sue for fraud and misrepresentation. Um, I don't have a problem with like actual clinical tools, things backed by science, things that work well. Um, and you're going to find a lot of people that want to really talk up like how great a polygraph test is or something and they're just not. Um, and uh, one of the easiest ways to actually just show that is visually with a little diagram like this and everything and I'm going to make two of them. Um, I don't know where you might be, but in my state, it's it's actually out of hand. A lot of people don't know it. They're they're like ah screw them, screw them, screw them. But um, some of the examples, of stories I know, like I know a guy personally. Um, him and his girlfriend, sex at sixteen. A uh, teacher took up his phone and went through it, which she is technically not legally allowed to. But once she has and she's reported it, a police officer can look through it afterwards. <laughs> and that's the case that happened, and it was his. It was his girlfriend, and uh, they had been together since like third grade. Um, as far as I know, no cheating or anything. They were each other's first, all that uh, lovey dovey Korean Topanga stuff, and I'm showing my age as we I talk about that, but that was the whole thing. And he got a couple of years because he was a kid, first time offense, all that kind of stuff, but there was pictures of them, of course, doing stuff. And his mom got mad and tried to hit them for the unequal protection of the law. And that led to actually them, instead of letting him go for them not prosecuting her, they prosecuted her. But she had been the one who actually had been recording the videos. So while they originally just went after him for the events in the videos, it was her for like the manufacturing and the creation of all that and she got hit pretty hard and it's just sad because why would you actually do that to kids um tell them not to do that remind them that even whenever they're older those videos and stuff can get out <coughs> don't send kids to juvenile to have to go on to go to prison later it's just not reasonable really um but it has become a drastic case of always like this now, um, so much so that people can't even find the monsters anymore. Uh, we've gotten a little obsessed with things like uh, toys that are designed to condition children to pedophilia. I hate to tell you this, but that's not how it works. You can't condition that shit. Um, you might be able to get a kid to be uh, condition to learn helplessness in such a situation, but then playing with a toy that has a button hidden underneath it that's not a press button, it's a pressure button, is not actually that kind of shit. Um, you're just wanting to get up in arms and see seem cool to all your other mom friends and everything, but um, while you're worried about that, it's Uncle Joe. Um, if you go actually and look at the statistics and stuff, you're basically just conditioning fear into your children, running around on a rampage, and while you're busy off doing that, and you leave them with Uncle Joe for babysitter, that's what happens. And it's your fault, plain and simple, because you want to support bullshit. And that's, that's basically what it is. And people just want to sound important and cool, like they're on the little rampage train and everything. And it's those kind of idiots that are going to get stuff like the Earn It Act passed. Um, 
which I haven't felt brave enough to even go look and see how it's doing, to be honest. Um, it was actually doing well, way too well last time I saw it because, of course, they were pulling me. It's for our kids. And, yes, like, protect our kids, of course. But I'm sorry. I don't want any of my kids ever to have a backdoor into, like, every app on their phone because it's a door. And any door that can be opened... Uh, by the appropriate people can be opened by the wrong people and basically what you're going to get is a bunch of the wrong people kicking at that door constantly and the moment they get in not only do they have access to your kids every bit of personal information they have access to like their friends and everything the back door that was put there um, really one of the best things you're going to be able to do ever is teach your kids how to be observant, how to help their friends if they are in trouble to stop stuff early. Like, I don't know. I remember being a kid, a teen. A lot of people seem not to. All right, so if we go to the highest reported percentage of polygraphs, let's see what we got here. High rate of false positives. Um, Last one I saw was like 89%, but I want to, okay. Um, <clears throat> proponents claim like 98 and 82, so um, sadly the numbers are never as good as they think they are. Uh, it's one of the biggest thing it is, it's actually very quite dependent upon people confessing. Um, Come on, give me my finding page. There we go. Uh, so yeah, claim high accuracy rates, 98 to 82. Um, and then, let's see, we tested previously described models for their predictive power, blah, blah, blah. Summarized classification based on a 0.5 probability cutoff. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, aren't tests supposed to be like a 0.95? That's, they're talking about the sub-alpha there, aren't they? If this is the value I think it is, it's been a little... Um, In statistics, there's a sub-alpha, and that sub-alpha uh, is actually like how likely something is to happen. And okay, okay, okay. No, this is a uh, this is not that. Okay, for a second there, that's normal. That's a uh, probability uh, cut off of 0.5. So that's. That's where we're checking to base it against random, which is fine. That's fine. Whew. I was about to split my shit. There's a sub-alpha, which is basically the percentage chance of like that answer being right or whatever. And it, it, pretty much anything under 0.95 is considered just junk. Um, and so I had to go check because it's been a while. And to be honest, I failed my statistics class the first time. Um, we had one big project that was like 90% of our grade, and I'm sure you've heard of that uh, banking error where they all use Microsoft Excel, and that was me. Somewhere on set page two, I messed up. Um, uh, see, here we go, 0 0.95 and 0 0.5 is cutoff values for classifying deceptive and non-deceptive. There we go. That's the one I'm thinking of right there. Uh, But I actually want to find whatever the highest actually tested percentage is. But we can pick, we can actually pick their values. You know that? We can do this with their values. Which is 98%. Um, ah. Right, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to still run with their number. I really don't like doing it like meh. But. Let's just put it below. Um, anyways, I really don't know what to talk about. I'm really trying to just distract myself. I probably won't even post this video, but I kind of got a headache and my fridge is really loud after nine months of listening to like nothing but my fridge. <laughs> uh, so it just helps. I, I could probably play like magic or something, but you know, whatever. I wasn't thinking when I did that. And so anyways. So we do that. We'll go here and get rid of this layer completely. Um Select, uh, deselect. Come on. Of course. I am not a big fan of computer right now. Um, it's not bad, but it's been driving me nuts. One of the, uh, it's definitely a great free program. It's definitely capable. Um, I was sadly raised on some Photoshop that I can't really just even seem to adjust to Creator Rights. Um, it worked a little better before I did some add ons, and I get a lot of stuff that I use out of them. Um, not essential, essential stuff, but it's stuff that it's I've used before and want to have available to me, all that kind of stuff. And so, they're there, but ever since then, it's like it's broken it where I can't actually do any of the stuff. All right, so. There we go. We have 100 people. Um, I find this hilarious. By the way, I just, this actually comes off a sign that I saw in the military. Um, it's usually white on a blue background just like a bathroom sign and it's got a little shower guy and it's like no <laughs> um so yeah that's guy humor for you ladies you don't want to be one of us everybody else i just i found that by happenstance for a bathroom sign for men and was like yeah all right so we got one out of a hundred <clears throat> so one percent and Okay, so we have this dude right here, <clears throat> and he has, since they want to say it, we'll say a 98% chance of being accurate. Where's my text? There's my text. Uh, by the way, I can't get, like, I can get the quick keys on this Mac to work, so. Oh, come on. See, I can't get, to there we go. 
this guy has a 98% chance. Bad guy, we'll call him the bad guy. 98% chance of the test catching. Because he's always the bad guy. I promise I'm clicking people. Oh, man. Alright, so. Here we go. We have a 98% chance of catching this guy. And then over here, we got the impotent little bastards. Sorry. Uh, they've probably just been through uh, something like gay camp or uh, sex offender treatment and as a result are just too freaked out to even talk to somebody else. Um, I'm actually waiting for some of these uh, classes that they swear help people to actually turn out to be a lot like the the day camps where they have a higher suicide rate and everything than everything else. Um, look, there are definitely bad people out there that hurt people, and I am definitely on everybody else's team with that, but I have to ask questions first because I've seen just too many of the other kind. Um, uh, but once we've asked a couple questions, if you want to go after them with a pitchfork, I'm not going to bother you too much. Just ask some questions. I had a buddy that had a Twitter account that he used to look up hot celebrities and he stopped getting onto it. And it was like four years later because he had gotten married and the police showed up and hang on, I'm going to turn this off because I'm going to do bad habits. <coughs> Anyways, <coughs> the um, police showed up and they're like, you know, you've got this CP on your account. And he had no idea. He was completely clueless. And he was like, I don't know, I'll like, I'll run a sting auction or something. And it was somebody that started sending him private messages. And it, the first one started like eight months after he had lo last logged in. But it was on his account. So as far as they were concerned, he was in ownership. And he could offer no proof that he didn't know the guy. I never talked to him anywhere else. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, quit defending him. But it's... You know, if they can see his last login date, and it is not since that stuff came in, why would you actually even bother? And yet, it's what they like to do, and they scare plea bargains into people in my state. All right, what was our percentage on that? Um, that is not the document. Okay. Critics say the test is only accurate about 70% of the time, but we're running with a 98% here. Um, Alright, so... We'll still run with a 98%, but you saw where it said in there that it was more like 80. 98% chance of false identifying. So we're definitely, we're running with their numbers and we're giving their numbers the biggest on each side, which uh, this is actually much lower. Um, and there's plenty of people that know this kind of thing, but they even use this when doing stuff like uh, vaccines and everything because they have to actually look at it helps this many people and this many people won't get sick, but it'll actually make this many people sick. <coughs> And, of course, sometimes they're wrong and sometimes they do hide it. So I'm not going to be all, oh, vaccines are always right. Don't get me anti-vaxxers over here out of all things. I'm already going to get blamed for being a person that's, you know, crazy about other stuff. But uh, that's not, that's still not the case. I just understand there is 
more things than just a simple this person is hunting kind of thing. And I'm sure everybody's not going to hear a difference in there unless they've actually experienced and known somebody. But I don't really care. You can go to hell. Um, but here we go. We got a 98% chance of catching the one bad guy. And we got a 90 or 8. I didn't even do that right, actually. That's a... We're going to have to put a new statistic there because I'm dumb. If it's 98% and it runs the other way, we have a 2% chance of false identifying. So, so we now got a 2% right there. Um, so bad guy, we have a 98% chance of catching him. And a 2% chance of false identifying. So out of this, there's actually 99 people that are good. And one bad guy. And so 2% of 99, hang on, let me pull up my calculator. Ninety nine times point zero two two percent. That is out of these one bad guys, we have one point nine eight, of course, but I'm bad at math in my head whenever I'm CP and been listening to the refrigerator for nine months. So we find out of one hundred people, one guilty. We have 1.98 innocent condemned. I probably spelled all that wrong kind of thing. I can't see it in my screen right now. All right, so that's 1.98 innocent condemned. And that's my problem with the idea of it at all. I picked their biggest number, and I gave their biggest number to the innocent people, which they don't even do that. Uh, this would actually be like 17. So out of one group study like this, you would actually end up with more like 17 people that were falsely condemned. All right, so um, we're going to grab this real fast. We'll shrink this thing down. Alright, so there's one of them. Let's zoom in here. Ah. Yeah. And we're gonna make a little ten by ten of this if I can fit them in here really fast.
because um, because of those small of the way those numbers work. Is that it? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's put this little block back over here. Ah. So uh, I don't know how everybody state does it wherever you're at, but mine does love this tool. Um, it's not legal for them to use it in actual, like for the criminal stuff, but they'll put the people on therapy on it and stuff like that. Uh, they do like also early on in the investigative process to put people on it. And I'm a little more of a fan on that one because of the confession parts. Um, if they didn't actually push people for failing it, but it kind of requires you to, you know, actually believe you're going to get in trouble and whatnot. But they they get people to break down under it and be like, oh, well, this happened. Um, if you've ever watched Tim Miller's Bullshit, there's an episode where they actually get the guy to, like, unquote, confess. But three, four, five, six. Um... Ultimately, it doesn't really matter what numbers I use on this, so that'll be acceptable. Um, because we just see how it works with uh, bigger numbers. Um, but um, it's also a problem because that's all they care about. It doesn't actually matter if you... If you were to pass it later, the guys, they shove in therapy by saying, like, you never did it. Like, I really never did it, and you stuck to it the whole time. They don't go, hey, we should revisit that. Instead, it's just a, if you fail, you go back to prison. And uh, my state cares about stuff like, where you on Facebook, which they've passed laws like Packingham versus North Carolina. Texas has basically decided, like, we don't care what the United States says. We're better than them, and we can do whatever we want. And it's largely because the few bad ones do super horrendous things. Um, there is some just horrible, horrible stories. And I've known people in my life that have experienced some horrible, horrible things. That is, it goes well beyond even the, the stuff like he got me drunk at the bar or anything, which is still quite wrong. Don't, don't ever try to blame me that I'm supporting that. Um, but you end up with the other bullshit of just monstrous stuff. And so everybody, that's what you always picture. You don't picture the guy with his high school girlfriend, uh, like my friend. And that's actually not me. Everybody listening, don't go, hey, that's him. Um, maybe I'll tell you my story someday. But... Um, anybody that wants to can look it up. I'm not really concerned uh, about too much anyways, but I live my life. It is what it is, and uh, I'm off in the world pulling some crazy things right now. Um, people are just now probably going, oh shit. Um, and this is actually part of it. But... Hi everybody, I hope you're enjoying me. Um, I don't know if I get any like wear and gain some ground anytime soon, people will probably hear about it. Otherwise I'll just be the crazy guy in Texas that did stupid things, but I'm okay with that too because first uh, rule of getting good at anything or figuring something new out is you have to be willing to look stupid. Um, I have just been stuck in the house a little too long, and I do worry about, like, some psychosis or something setting in, because uh, you just start talking to yourself. I'm basically in ad seg of a prison, but without the guy that comes around and shakes your finger through the gate. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we have 36 times 10. We have 360 people here. 
Right. So if we have 360 people, all right, and we have, and that'll make 36 of them bad. All right, and so we will find 98% of 36. It works better with actual whole numbers, like a thousand and stuff, but th we have 36 in bad, and 98% of them will be found when they're being bad. We will find, found 35.28 bad people. All right, now we have 360 of them, 36 of them are bad people, so out of that we have 324 good people. And they each have a 2% chance. So we actually just sentenced 6.48 good people. Falsely accused. And that's with their numbers. That's their numbers. <clears throat> All right, and I'll show you in a second whenever we do the next one. Well, it'll matter more, but let me do the, um, but uh, if you do critics numbers, Go ahead and put this in there. That's using the 98% accuracy of proponents for both, which even they don't support for the non guilty. Uh, due to the way it works with stress and stuff, it actually gets much worse. Um, it favors letting an innocent person go really than the other one uh, way around, but um, all right. So they, uh, we'll drop that number size down. Uh, there we go. And then we got to do what the critics say, which is 70%. And they pretty much say across the board because they say, I guess, like no difference, but we already know it favors the other way, but. All right, so we're 36 times 70%, we find 70% of them, that's uh, 25.2 out. Of 36 and 360 minus 36 times uh, we want to do the false positive point loser. Ah, 
I gotta do it all like order of operation. Ninety-seven point two innocent people guilty. Uh, there's actually a name for this. Um, I can't remember what it is. And uh, that's why I can't support this for anything that actually controls someone's li life and whether or not they go to prison, uh, whether or not they're investigated heavily, um, that type of stuff. That's too many innocent people in a country that believes in innocent until proven guilty. Um, we have essentially thrown it out by choosing to use this method for any reason, uh, either one of them really. And the larger the numbers get, the worse it looks. Uh, but... Um, that should be big enough. Alright, but I shouldn't have closed the other one. Uh, I think it's on my desktop. If I can remember how to get there. I hate Mac. Nope. Nope, that was what I wanted. Desktop. There you go. Alright. Uh, but... What we do... Like, even if it was used more as a way to target who might be, might be, but it's not. We, we here in my state, we're like, bah ha ha, this is for sure. All right, so we're going to do some dependent variables now. Um, so... We don't have just a, they test them once or whatever here, they actually, in my state, once they release them out on parole, they've completed like all these months of counseling that probably make them better at relationships and identifying personal like problems than the average like 25 year old currently in relationships, um, which is sad. Uh, but they, you know, people are like, oh, the emotional intelligence of children, well, you know what? Have you tried dating at 25 or 30? Like, it's, it's fucking sad. But, I actually don't even need all these. I can just uh, go ahead and do it with an innocent person and a guilty person. Uh, but really, the innocent person is the one we're looking at. So, right here, we want the bad person to go to jail, and they have a 98% chance. If that's all it ever was, you know what? It's not bad. It's really not. It's a decent percent chance to get the bad guy. It was a bad guy.
So There we go. Alright, so... This thing is getting just kind of sluggish over here right now. I don't know if we'll be able to see it, see it in the video. If I kind of stopped talking, I got all focused on that. Alright, so, and dependent variables, that one was 82%, so I believe. Let's pull that up. Correct in here, this checks a range from, whoop. Uh, look at that range right there, actually. The correct innocent detections, so they're, they're detecting innocents that are innocent, it is 12.5 to 94.1. Those are nowhere near the numbers we're using. Um, scientific validity, about 12% correct innocent people. That is ridiculous. It averages 76%. Hang on. I'm going to steal this link right here just so I can actually put it in here. It's always good to cite your sources. Uh, but you can toss this in here. All right, so 70%, 6% of the time. Get this data in there. find the innocent innocent. Right. <clears throat> that means 24% of the time find the innocent guilty. So for this person to be found innocent every time is actually what's a dependent variable. 
and we are going to have to actually sit here and show his percent chance of passing each time. This four, he's got a 76% chance of passing the first time. So that's uh, 0 0.766 times 0 0.76, uh, second time pass. Because it's just a basic variable of dependent. You had to pass the first one, you had to pass the second one. And then chance of passing on the next one. And it gets just progressively worse. Uh, which is another reason, because they do like every six months for some of them in my states that are on like therapy programs, they do. Um, every three months for some people that they're really suspicious of. Two, three, oh, point three, six, two, one, seven, six. There we go. And we always talk about like they breed more criminals or they make more criminals, but that's just my problem here. Um, you see just after a few rounds of this stuff, and some people end up just having to go through a whole bunch of them because of happenstance and angry ex, uh, because of the nature of their crime or something. But I 
after just, if they do it every six months, after just three years on their parole or whatever, they've only got a one in five chance of actually making it through. And they're like, everybody has this percent chance of re-offense. Uh, they love to toss that number out. But it all goes back to 1986 and a... Psychology Today, when a guy had actually started doing these treatments and he wanted to promote his business and he backed no research except his own claims so that he could promote his business and Psychology Today was like, yeah. Um, just so you know, Psychology Today, it's not a bad magazine to start and like pick up some information from, something like that, but consider it kind of pop culture or Wikipedia, something like that. You do have to back it up. It is going to be a lot like news and stuff where they're like, Scientists discover antimatter in a third star or whatever, and then it's like, um, actually, we just did an equation. Um, we didn't, you know, that type of stuff. News doesn't understand science. And psychology today, not the best for it, but um, let's toss a line in here really fast just to mark the, the years. Um, by the way, my plan, since I'm just in a little legal rampage this year, is actually going to sue um, a company that does this with a psychologist company that does this and hit them for false business practices, fraudulent representation of their uh, statistics, all that kind of stuff, and endangering the public. Uh, I'm sure they will appreciate it, but I'm still indigent, and they can't seem to push any of my stuff through the courts, so I'm being a complete jerk about it now. Uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. But as you can see, like year one, they're down to almost 50% chance of just being knocked out because of their polygraphs. And if that our arbitrary thing is basically a flip of the coin, then why are we even bothering to waste this energy, time, manpower, paying your taxes into that? Because we can just flip coins for 25 cents and do the same thing. But uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm tired of paying taxes for witch hunts of people who hook up their girlfriend and everybody thinks they're going to be together and her get 20 years for them having a little fun uh, because the teacher broke uh, search and seizure laws of the Supreme Court that's backed it up. California backed it up. Uh, I think it was Michigan had one. Um, pretty much every court has held it up that it, they don't have probable cause. They don't have a reason if they took it from them. They're not supposed to search it. Um, sure, their kids, whatever, all their that stuff with their things, but it's it was illegal for her to look for, through it in the first place. And I mean, I'm assuming her. He actually never gendered the teacher, um, so we might actually even have a worse scenario there where we have one of the bad ones. And then he's like, "Oh, let's tell so I don't get in trouble or something." And, you know, I'm just theorizing, but why is this person going through his phone in the first place, to be honest? Um, but I am the kind of jerk that is going to actually try to even, while everybody's looking at these stats, <laughs> actually try to make them look at that kind of stuff. What What did I just do with that? <laughs> I just lost that folder. All right. I lost a folder. Uh, this is untitled, so make this a PNG. But uh, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, they're the bad guys. They're the bad guys. They're the bad guys. But I mean, what if this is your boyfriend who bumped into a girl or your best friend who the girl did lie? Um, in my state, that's strict, strict liability. Um, you don't get a defense. Like, it doesn't matter if she was two days from being of age and she had a fake ID and her parents backed her up on her age. She was going to jail. And it's just stuff like that. We're wasting a lot of time and energy and fear on when we have been doing it for centuries. And almost every girl I know dated 20 year olds in high school. And I just don't approve of it. You know, their kids look into kids. But that's what we're hunting now. 
instead of the things we should be hunting. We've gone out and we went from hunting lions in the outback that are like stealing our children and stuff to shooting gazelle and being like we're big game hunters. It's not the same. Um, you didn't achieve shit. You just gotta tell you that it looks good whenever you go up for detective. But, um, this is what they like to do. And then the shoveling therapy, don't even get me started. Um, but that is a whole hour of that rambling bullshit of that and me making it. I'm going to eventually someday post that. And I'll link it into my lawsuit and everything so that they actually have to put it in there for relevance. Because I'm a jerky face and I'm mad at the state for a lot of things. So I'm going to break their toys. Um... Long story short, um, I have a daughter that I have not seen since she was two, and they still can't give me a hearing on it. I almost had one Friday, and that was something I, I loved dearly and really fought for, and they lied to me about it to begin with, and then they gave it to my ex-wife, who um, I don't know if she passed her polygraphs or not, uh, hint, hint, but um, she has apparently just given the kids away, and they're just now realizing that's an issue. Um, after all this time, I still haven't even really got a welfare check with eyes on her. I've heard her say I love you once. And I passed my polygraph, by the way. But the kicker is, um, they want to know things like everybody you've ever had sex with. And they want a number, and I had to write it out with a number. And I don't even know the number now because they're people. So fuck you guys. They're not numbers. I don't know why you want me to start objectifying them as just some tally mark on my bedpost. But on my way to that, um, there was a girl. I was no, it wasn't there. It was someone else. Uh, it was it was about a year and a half before that. But oh man, I think I even left my girlfriend off. Uh, I don't look at the list. I still have the list because it's it's a matter of this evidence that I've been building up for a little while. But I left people off that list on purpose that people could verify that I did and I passed. And then they altered the documents afterwards and put them in. So now I'm a person who can prove that they can be beaten and I'm a person who can do the basic math and they broke HIPAA law. So I'm going to go punch that in the face out of spite and eventually they're going to realize I'm an angry dad and probably just still keep being stupid and violating my rights. But until then, uh, I'll just keep this up because why not?